to see out of curiosity a wind farm once, but you're not going to want to see it twice. It's not a return visitors thing. I mean, like just like you might want to see uh, an oil refinery. It's a curiosity. It's not a thing of natural beauty. We're talking about, you know, natural beauty in this area is an economic asset. It isn't just something pretty to look at. It's something for the future to build on for recreation and industries. Um, I feel that this, the type of uh, um, uh, industrial windmill uh, uh, facilities that are proposed would forever destroy a huge economic potential we have in an area that's just barely holding its own but has something to build on that you'd be yanking the rug out from under that. And that's just one of the aspects of it. I think it, uh, responsible uh, uh, green energy is one issue that I think needs to be explored. But explored is the word as opposed to uh, jumping into something where uh, potentially the municipality and the constituents of yours in this area uh, haven't had a chance to make a uh, decision uh, with all available knowledge and reporting. And I think it's way premature. Uh, and it would be unfortunate to jump into this when we are potentially compromising uh, something that can never be brought back to the area. I'm happy yeah. to take some more before. OK. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to be brief. No, don't. I come don't from me. a different angle. For 50 years, I've been a Democrat, and I've worked for the Democratic Party mostly in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia area. I moved to Massachusetts to the Berkshires 10 years ago. I thought I was moving to the area of free speech, of self-determination with a magnificent history. And I was so proud to, to move here to New England. I thought I came home in a way. What do I find with this Wesra bill that it will take away the control of local governments to decide what happens for the residents and the lands over which they supposedly have control. I just don't believe that this Westra bill could be a democratic bill, signed off by a democratic governor who lives down the street from me in Richmond. I just don't believe it. I'm for sorry, God's I missed sake. your name at the beginning. I oh, I'm sorry. I'm My name is Deborah Kane. Deborah Kane. Sorry, Deborah, uh, I didn't mean uh, to No, no, Thanks. I'm sorry Keep I didn't give no, it to you. No, 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 that's mine. The governor lives down the street. Uh, we know him quite well. I just, but mostly as a Democrat, I'm outraged that this bill, Westra, would have that label on it. It belongs on the Republican side. They're the ones who are in bed with the developers and big business and big businesses, not us. At least that was my understanding. There's no way that I can vote for a Democratic senator or a Democratic uh, uh, governor if they sign off on this bill. So what do I do? I can't vote for a Republican. I mean, I couldn't. So I'm lost. So please don't do this. If you have any influence at all over the direction of this bill, please don't steer it to any kind of fruition, especially the Westra. As an environmentalist, I'm willing to listen to both sides, and I'm listening to examine specific sites and specific areas as to where wind turbines can do good and no harm. But as a Democrat, I can never, ever sign off on the Westra thing. Thank you for your Marshall. Okay. Um, I'm Marsh Rosenthal, and I live up the hill in Savoy. Um, the senator and I have met on a couple of occasions, and most recently out in Hyannis, uh, where uh, the uh, Joint Committee on Health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, energy, I cannot recite that to Te you. Telecom utilities and energy. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, where they held, uh, again, an information gathering hearing. Um, you, you held one here in Hancock, yeah, in Hancock earlier on, um, and as I explained to the subcommittee, uh, uh, I was unable to attend the one that was uh, done in Berkshire County because of health issues. And so uh, I traveled uh, on Wednesday the 19th, if you recall. It was a great inundation. It was across the state. I felt as though I swam. Uh, the distance, and I got to Hyannis the following morning. Enough on me. I want to say this, if, if indeed wind power was all it is uh, touted to be, uh, renewable and clean, uh, a 
and, and, and using available, uh, uh, endlessly available fuel and, uh, and, and could produce uh, sufficient energy to somehow augment or offset uh, our needs. Perhaps I wouldn't be speaking. Uh, I did furnish um, the Senator's Joint Committee uh, a scientific study that has recently been completed in the Netherlands that absolutely shows that wind power is not sustainable. That means that it produces more effluent, more carbon effluent in, its, in, in, in creating the equipment, installing the equipment, and in setting up the backup uh, plants which must be set up with uh, conventional means which are typically gas fired because they don't run efficiently w when they're coming up online uh, and going offline just like your car doesn't run efficiently when it's out of tune. That means it consumes more fuel. And so the, 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 the bottom line in this Dutch study is that this mode of power generation is just not sustainable. And so Coming from this place, if something that's really not sustainable is being really projected and pushed and foisted upon every community, every community potentially in this commonwealth, what's that all about? And who indeed might be benefiting? And certainly it's not the neighbors to these things. And so I had, I had the opportunity to meet with and speak with some of those folks, particularly those folks who live in Falmouth, where they have 1.6 megawatt units very close to their homes. And that's just over a thousand feet from their homes. That's very close. Uh, and the, the one gentleman who, who I can I, I tell you about is a gentleman and his wife, his name is Mr. Neil Anderson. He had a something like a $200,000 a year construction business. His business was very much directed toward environmental uh, projects. After the coming of the turbine, and by the way, he was all for this, now he can barely clear $20,000 a year. They don't know where they're going to get the money to pay their bills and their mortgage. The man is going down. He's, he's suffering acute depression. His neighbors and his friends are really concerned, really concerned about his outcomes. And he is just one. His wife attempted suicide. There are 45 or 50 other neighbors who are also suffering the effects of these vibrations, which are both audible and inaudible vibrations. The health issues are acute. We just don't know here in the Berkshires what that might be like because we haven't experienced it ourselves. So I traveled. I learned. I saw. And I, as I testify to the Senator's Committee, it occurred to me to say that when medical students are graduated to become doctors, they must take the Hippocratic Oath. The core of that oath is, I will do no harm. And so I asked the committee, should government be held to a lesser standard than that. I received some blank stares, some knowing nods, and silence. So, I ask you, Senator, how can we go forward with something that's really a pig in a poke and potentially a disaster for our people? How can we do that? I can come to that too, and I'm happy. Do we have anyone else on this issue? Just, I don't mean to jump in, I, I, and I don't want to ignore people. I just want to. I I also am very concerned about Westra. Mm -hmm. and, and, and your name again? I apologize. Uh, Joanne McGee. Joanne McGee. Oh, okay. I know we're signed up. So. I am Great. Up. Thank, Thank you. you. Just wanted um, to make sure. Thanks. Um, I am very concerned, Ben, and like Deborah, um, and like uh, 
I think Deborah was the one. I, I think you need to think long and hard about your continuing support for WESRA. And I know you've come out and said as co-chair now that you haven't come to a position. But it's very clear in your past testimony and support for the bill last year mm -hmm. that you did support it. Yeah, and I don't deny that I voted for it yeah. last session. I don't. Uh, so it's hard to believe that you don't have a position on it, I understand, for reasons of your position on the committee that it might be best not to say you do, but having supported it before, pushing it so strongly now, um, it, you know, I would question whether that's true. I oh. hope it's not true, and I hope you listen really hard to what you're hearing today. You are going to continue to hear from Berkshire County oh, yeah. on this issue. Yeah. And I really don't think you want your legacy as a politician to be the demise of local control and these sort of desolate structures that after 15 years and destroying up our county are still there, rusting away. I just don't think you want that. But maybe he does, could you? No, no, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to try and respond to everything. So first of all, to start with sort of the, first of all, thank you all for coming and thank you for, for offering your thoughts. Um, and to start with the last point, Pushing it couldn't be further from the truth in the sense that if I was pushing something as chair of a committee, it would have had the earliest hearing, we could have just done a hearing in Boston and moved it through the process right away that way. And one of the things I said to my co-chair, John Keenan, was this is an issue that when we debated it last session, every time I talked to someone in the Berkshires about it, they didn't like that an issue that was of more importance in the Berkshires than in Boston didn't have a hearing out here and didn't have a hearing in the two areas that I think where the debate is, is the hottest at this point. That's why we had the hearing in Hancock, that's why we had the hearing uh, on the Cape and we took over 13 and a half hours of testimony there. Um, uh, as to my previous position, you're right, I voted for the bill last session. Um, I think I owe it to my constituents and I think I owe it uh, to um, everyone in the Commonwealth as chair of that committee to take all that testimony, to take it seriously, uh, and to determine if I was wrong in the past. There are issues where, even within our own energy policy in the Commonwealth, we've gone down one road only to determine that that wasn't the right way to go. We did that on biomass. We did it on biomass. We uh, got a study from the Manomet Center that said, uh, based on uh, the newest science, we don't think on a life cycle analysis, life cycle analysis, I apologize, um, that uh, biomass ought to be in the same class one for renewables in our renewable portfolio standard. Um, and so we adjusted our policy based on that. Um, and I will tell you that, that listening to the testimony in particular in Falmouth, uh, you can't help uh, but listen to those stories um, and have it impact you. There's no two ways you can. Um, and I will also tell you that I am open to all, um, open to all uh, information that has come my way. Um, I asked Kelly for a copy of Windfall. I've watched Windfall, and I think that's an instructive uh, documentary about the process. I absolutely think it is. Um, I will tell you that, um, uh, uh, and to get to a couple of things, I apologize again here. Um, so the two hearings, uh, the governor's goal of 2,000 megawatts of wind in Massachusetts. Uh, quite frankly, I don't see how we could do it, one way or the other. Um, I have never publicly uh, stated support for that goal by the governor, and that is not written in to the Green Communities Act, the Global Warming Solutions Act, the Green Jobs Act. That is not something that uh, we have said to the governor, develop a goal this way or the other way. Um, so that's not something that's legally binding. And I, again, having listened at these two uh, hearings um, and talked to some of my colleagues about some of the um, aspects of that that would actually fall under the Oceans Act, um, I just don't see how you develop that much in, in the Commonwealth, even if you do, maybe if deep water wind technology moves forward 25 years or something, but that's not a conversation for that point. Um, so, um, where do we go from there? Um, quite frankly, as a committee, I think we have a lot of testimony to take in at this point. Um, we have a lot of testimony from uh, different communities. Uh, to take in, uh, and, and I think that the baseline that everyone agrees on um, at this point is that there ought to be 
statewide standards of some sort, right? This is something that the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission has asked for uh, for years and something that various administrations have somewhat worked on uh, but haven't been, um, haven't been instructed to do so. Um, but at least statewide standards, nothing that would, that would supplement local um, ordinances or anything along with it. I'm just talking about the baseline that everyone can agree to, to say, here's, if, if there will be projects, they will go here and they will be based on all of these health, uh, health standards, environmental standards, all of these issues. That's something that I think everyone can agree to. There should at least be standards. Do you, for, see, do you see those standards as setting a minimum with the local standards uh, being able to override those standards? And also, do you believe that those standards should be in place and vetted before any sort of expediting fast yes. track process should no, be in place? No, I think that the standards absolutely should be in place uh, before a process uh, comes in place. I think that I think there's and a that lot of process being Wesra, right? Well, not necessarily. I, I not necessarily. So I'm, I'm asking you what you believe. I mean, you right, believe and I'm. Do you believe that the first? part should be, let's get the standards right, at least a minimum standard at the state level, then let's talk about WESRA. Uh, Do you think WESRA is premature? At this point, I don't know. 100% uh, honestly, I don't know. Um, I think that um, standards well, out here... What are you feeling about it? Are you leaning one way or the other? Uh, you know, I don't know, because it is one of those issues where climate change is real. Uh, I, and I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 please, give me a second. Give me a second. I, I am, and, and I think everyone, no, no, I know, I know, so just, just, okay, and I know that. I know I'm talking to people who care deeply about environmental issues. I, so I want to get my head around what's the right and responsible way to address that. And just as I don't want my legacy to be that people in my district don't uh, have the ability uh, to have a say in the process, I also don't want my legacy to be that I didn't do enough to try and address that. And I'm trying to find a way to square those two things. I am. But so I let me just back up. You said that you would respond to what was said. Do you have an idea? Do you have the statistics of how many negative comments and how many minutes of negative uh, uh, facts that people presented versus the people who came in uh, uh, with positive yeah, uh, and the the two people from the from uh, Boston that came in and spoke at both, they said identical things, so they don't really count as two. They just should count as one. So, what is the proportion of people who don't want this to the proportion of people who do want it? Yep, uh, I would tell you a guess off the top of my head, and this is not with the numbers in front of me. Probably ninety to ten negative to positive at those two. And what does that say to you? It says to me that there are people who have real concerns about it. I, I don't deny that. I, I, it says to me that people have absolute legitimate and real concerns about it, and that we ought to be cautious and smart about how we proceed if we proceed. So we can't put forward Westra before we establish the standards because you take the control away. And, but there is, a problem. there is a problem with standards. That yep. There is a problem with standards. And, and, I know and there, I are think many there are many problems with standards. I want to come back to one thing you said. You're trying to square your a responsibility to address global warming with what we do in the state. Mm -hmm. But you've also, you know, pinned that against not trusting the people to make the decision by forcing through, which is what expedited per permitting really is, you've taken that control away and say we know better than the people. It, that is an interpretation. The only other law on the books in our state that look anything like Westra is Chapter 40B. That is the only other law in this state. Um, and that, you know, and you know, that has, and I'm on both sides of that question, but I think this is even more serious to come in with a technology that is in many ways unproven, at least here in the United States, and then to expedite and take away the ability for the people in a given locale to make a decision that fits what they need in their community, it almost says you're either not smart about what you're doing or you're not competent, so the state's going to take away your control. That is what you're saying. And, and that just doesn't make sense. And what's the hurry? 
Why is the governor in such a hurry? I mean, you're not going to turn global warming around and, you know, by building. You know, if you would take the money that's been dumped into CEC, Clean Energy Center, yep. that comes off ratepayers and taxpayers. Our, our system's been on charge correctly. Yeah. Uh, how much is it so far in CEC? How much has gone to CEC today? Uh, off the top of my head, I apologize. I don't know what their yearly, year to year is on the systems benefit charge. Well, I think, I, and I, I don't. And know. I can. That's something we can easily get for well, you. Well, the point is, yep. take those dollars and encourage, incentivize individual conservation programs. Mm -hmm. You know, if we'd all change a light bulb, we wouldn't. Everyone in Berkshire County, we wouldn't need Brody now. The ways to go. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have needed that controversy and that division in our community. We wouldn't have needed to tear up that mountain, let alone the rest of the ridge lines in the county. We wouldn't have needed to do it. So why are we dumping money into the developers when we don't have to do that? You could run it back through the people and get the people to help conserve. It just makes so much more sense. So why are you pursuing this path? Why am I pursuing, again, the, I, 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 no, no, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's just, yep. it's, it's a very difficult issue. Uh, absolutely. And I wish mm -hmm. you would really, you know, sort of step back and really look hard at what you're trying to do. Take the time. Take uh, the time. Which is what <laughs> we have started to do by having two hearings on this bill, when every other bill that's been before our committee has only had one. We've had two hearings outside of the state house. And I know you may think that that means nothing, but that was us trying to show, and, and I think showing, that we're coming out here to listen. There is nothing that says a bill has to have a hearing in the community where it would be most impacted or where we hear from folks the most. That was part of it. That was part of my commitment to that. Um, so, I, and, and again, I didn't file these bills. So we have to have a hearing on it uh, constitutionally when someone files a bill by a date. So we've had these two hearings. Um, we have uh, heard a lot of concerns um, and quite frankly, we're trying to digest those and see what the right step is from there. And that step isn't predetermined. And I understand if it would be, um, if you would rather hear from me, yes, I am for it right now, no, I am not for it right now. But I also want to go through that process, to hear that testimony, to do that research, um, to determine what are the right next steps. And relative to conservation, just... You know, we, and I admit there is a lot more to do, and that's something that we're looking at uh, before the committee right now, uh, but Massachusetts invests more in conservation and energy efficiency than any state per capita in the United States of America. And that same day that we had the hearing at Barnstable High School, uh, the governor uh, was in uh, D.C. getting an award uh, for Massachusetts having the best energy efficiency policy. Have we done enough? Absolutely not. We're all here right now, and wherever our homes are, we have devices that are plugged in that are 10% of our energy bills. That's a phantom load that we should all be able to take off by flipping a switch every time we leave our homes. We should have more smart meters so that we can control our devices and use them at a time when energy is cheapest and so that we don't have that ramping up and ramping down. You're 100% right. We need to do more on uh, solar, absolutely. Uh, we have a leadership position on solar in Massachusetts, and we've rightly been recognized uh, for that, but we have a lot more to do when you think about it. Solar in the United States of America is, I think it's half of 1% of our entire energy portfolio. There's a massive, um, uh, massive opportunity. There's a massive opportunity for electricians to be put to work, putting those panels up. I mean, there's, there's huge opportunity uh, in solar, and we're looking at that um, as well. Quite frankly, I think there's opportunity, a lot more opportunity, in low-impact hydro, um, if it's done right. Um, right. So there, I don't... So why not give uh, those industries the same kind of preferential treatment that Wesher gives to the wind industry, where there's so much controversy about whether it even helps with global warming, mm -hmm. whether it causes more CO2 emissions than it actually uh, cleans up, where it causes enormous environmental wildlife, dis wildlife habitat fragmentation. You know what Brody Mountain looked like before it became... Uh, a parking lot full of 400 foot towers. That's part of the reason I went and up there the other day to check it out because I wanted to see what it looked like after they too. Blast, I, they, I, dig, they dig deep foundations, they pour a lot of concrete, there are wide roads that have to be maintained. 
all fragments that wildlife habitat. It impacts the tourists and economy. There are trade-offs. Mm -hmm. So why why wind getting the preferential treatment as opposed to solar, as opposed to any other kind of project? Why create a separate fast track for wind? And I would submit to you that the only reason, or that the two primary reasons, is that one, when they did the Green Communities Act, they funded a study called the Barrier Study, or what's referred to as the Barrier Study, where they went out and they asked wind developers, what can we do for you to make it easier here? And they wrote the legislation that we call WESRA right now, based on that study. And then the second thing is, the reason that we have to do WESRA for wind is because it's the only one that has such horrific environmental problems with it that people aren't even sure that it's worth doing. It's that trade-off. Solar doesn't have that. People are not up in arms about putting solar on a ground floor. People are up in arms about having their entire view shed room, their tourist economy trashed, wildlife habitat destroyed, birds and bat populations that are already at, at increased uh, levels of degradation because of wildlife problems, wildlife habitat problems. All of that's going downhill with wind. That doesn't happen with solar. So why is it that we have this special process, this special expediting, which takes away local control, even if you only believe that the local control that's being taken away is the local towns being able to control the timeline and the amount of time that they want to spend thinking and talking about whether they want to have those two turbines up there, or those five, or those ten, or those hundred. I mean, I don't. I just don't see it as as a level playing field, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, well, I guess my question is, is you know, why is that? Why do you think that the wind industry, in particular, Gainer and all those guys, why do you think that they're getting preferential treatment through Wesra? Why not do it for solar? Why not do it for low impact hydro? Why not do it for all of them if you're going to do it for one? Well, don't do it for any, but it's a great question. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and before you answer, can I ask you one thing that goes with that? Okay. Uh, you've said many times that you don't know, yet you're involved as a person who's mediating a process. Mm -hmm. All right, so take yourself out of the equation and also let us know who is responsible for this push. Who, well, who filed the bill? Um, well, so, no, no, oh. In general, who, I mean, is it just the governor? The, the governor and his Does administration. Does the GE have anything to do with it? Their sales are 40% down on, on yeah. turbines. I will tell you that I have never talked to GE about wind energy. The only thing GE has wanted to talk to me about recently has been the Housatonic River, and quite frankly, I haven't wanted to talk to them about it all that much. So we've had very I'm short discussions. So that's, so I mean, that I don't, Jonas, I don't deny that Maybe they've talked to somebody. They haven't talked to me, and I will tell you that on this issue. Mr. Toby Davis. And, and let me, well, I've but, but got a question, question to get to. I'm, I'm sorry. Back. I'm no, no problem. Can I come back to you in a second? Sure, you can. Um, the, relative to why, why would, can, can you go to the question again? I apologize. The question really is, is, you know, is that I don't, I, I do under, I understand. I, I think I know the answer to my own question. I think the reason, um, that Wesra is there is just because of how controversial and how low low benefit wind is in, re in relative to its impacts. It needs help. It needs to be taken out of that sort of situation because it's it's so controversial. That's why Wesra exists. None of these other technologies, which I think we should be working very hard, and, and certainly conservation being, in my mind, one of the very first Absolutely. places. You're 100% Energy right. efficiency, all It's that our biggest renewable long. and it's our first fuel. You're 100 That, right. to me, is like the first thing. But it, of course, doesn't go for, it doesn't make good slogans, as Jimmy Carter found out. And, and so, you know, politically, I think it's the only way to get wind shoehorned into these places. And it's precisely because of how low benefit it is compared to its high impact. And I think that's why. And I guess my question is, is, do you agree with my assessment of why there's this special push for wind? Is that the reason, or is there some other reason? Uh, and I, if you have another reason, what is it? Yeah, I would tell you that um, not my reason, but generally when, when people are talking about renewables, right, <laughs> the, the conversation about renewables, what is the challenge on each renewable, right? Um, what's the challenge on solar? Cost is the only one that people ever bring up. It's cost and scale, right? On hydro, uh, what people generally bring up 
is the licensing process at the federal level. Um, that's generally what people bring up. And I will tell you, um, hydro is one where um, I, you know, it's one that I think a lot of people around here think is generally commonsensical, depending on how you do it. Any one of these done the wrong way can be bad. Right. Um, but, and I'm not trying to dismiss it, I'm just saying uh, hydro in particular is one that its past history has been bad. And I think more and more you've got more projects that are getting low impact certified through Lehigh, through the Low Impact Hydro Institute, that people support. When people bring up wind, people say siting. Siting's the issue. Now, what does that mean for some people? Some people um, want to dismiss anyone who has a siting issue and will say, well, they're NIMBYs. And I will tell you, that's something you've never heard come out of my mouth. You will never hear come out of my mouth. There are legitimate concerns about how we do or don't site wind projects, one way or the other. That's something, though, that a lot of people say. And I think that is the unfortunate simplification that has come out of the debate of Cape Wind. I think the worst thing that ever happened to Cape Wind is the process for how it came about. No matter whether or not you think there should or shouldn't be X amount of wind uh, turbines in Nantucket Sound, the fact that a developer was able to go in there and say, I own this, I'm going to do this, and you ended up with this you're with me or you're against me debate that has framed all of our debate around that particular energy source, around wind. And I think that's unfortunate because it is much more complicated than that oversimplification of it. So I think more than anything else, that is what drives it. I don't think, I, I don't dismiss the other angles on it. They are certainly at play, but I think that oversimplification of, well, the challenge with wind is sighting, so we'll do sighting and this is the fix to sighting. Sighting is just the beginning of the challenges with wind. I, I, but I'm just, uh, I'm answering the question to you. I think that's yeah, what. And that's I hope that I hope that you will. Um, NIMBY is really a slur. I mean, it's, and, and again, it's you've an never insult. heard me say that. It's an insult to people that are looking after their own community, their own yep. uh, the, the environment, in their local in local place. I mean, that's yep. that's who's that's, that's what we're supposed to be. And I'm just I was just trying to accurately well, hope, answer your I'll question. Hope you, what I'll hope you do is when you're sitting on a panel, which I know you do often, and you hear somebody. Use yep. that slur that you call them out. Uh, my favorite one was one that somebody brought up at Hancock, where they said, um, you know, just as bad as that is, what did they call it? Wary do I think? We are right. You don't understand the idea that someone else could come in and say, well, all you locals don't get it. We're right. You yeah, don't understand. That's the other name for whiz, right, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I think th I think that is it, that's just as bad, and that can be the. The, the, the reaction. So, and again, I, that's not something I say. I want to be very clear about that. That is something that I have, that, that's the, that's the debate. That's what people say. Well, I and, think, uh, well yeah. Marshall was, yeah. I apologize, Thank I'll you. come back. No. Thank you for honoring no. me. <laughs> I apologize. First of all, that's fine. Mr. Dovinidis, it starts with the president. You want to know where it's coming from? It starts with the president. It's, it's his, it's his desire to see renewable energy take off in, in, a, in a huge way. And it's our governor who wants to comply with our president's wishes. And if you want to ask the question, why does our government want to do this so much to the great chagrin of the populace of the state, you might have to wonder if our governor has aspirations to join the president's cabinet at some point. Now, that's just a speculation. But, but okay? Marshall, let me just jump in here for one second. That's second. politics no, no matter that I'm talking about. But the politics may be that the president is a one-term president and the, and, and the senator uh, loses if he wins with Wesra because we are going to organize everybody who's got a backyard He's got two cents in their pocket. Oh, and by the and, way, and, I'm an MB. Yeah, I'm an MB too. Who, who else is responsible for my backyard? Nobody. Just me. And again, I'm not, I have not, and I will not use that term. One thing, just one quibble don't with your you statement, have a backyard? I, No, I don't have a condo. I'm sorry. I, I, I have a parking lot. I, but, but let's be very clear. I grew up here too. It is not my goal to see the Berkshires change to the point where when... If and when I'm lucky enough to be blessed with kids, that if, if I raise them here, if I can find someone silly enough to say yes when I propose to her, that, that this area would be just as beautiful as it was when I grew up here. Right? Absolutely. That's, That's a thought. If, if Wesner passes, there's a whole group of women, a whole class of women that will not 
you will not appeal to. Jonas, now you're going to get my mother on your side, and that's just not fair. That's, that's not fair. <laughs> let, let, let me say...